Judge Hughes moved into Judge Werlein's chambers before Mrs. Werlein had an opportunity to move her, his stuff out and his personal possessions out. Uh, Judge Hughes had been an active litigator, but he had been an even more active Republican. He had run for the legislature in 1966, but lost to a Democrat named Bill Archer. I repeat, a Democrat named <laughs> Bill Archer. He was a very active volunteer for a Republican candidate named Bill Clements, who beat successfully and in two upsets Ray Hutchison, who would go on to marry our future United States Senator, and Attorney General John Hill. Hughes was a popular judge and eventually served as judge of the 189th, and today, of course, serves as judge of a federal, ju a federal judge of the Southern District. Our fourth lesson, if you want to be a judge, volunteer as a campaign worker for the winning <laughs> gubernatorial campaign. <laughs> but Judge Hughes had to run for election to the bench in 1980. Notwithstanding the fact that Ronald Reagan decisively carried Harris County against Jimmy Carter, it was far from a sweep in judicial races. There were 12 races that year. Six were won by Republicans. Six were won by Democrats. The one and only incumbent Republican to lose that year was Lynn Hughes. He narrowly lost to a justice of the peace from the Highlands named R. E. No, I'm sorry, R. L. Bob Smith. Apparently, a whole lot of voters mistook the justice of the peace for a prominent oil man, real estate investor, and philanthropist named. R. E. Bob Smith. Uh, now, Judge Smith was elected, did a fine job, had a common touch as former JP that always carried forward to representing pro se parties. Sadly, after six years of service, Judge Smith developed brain cancer and died in 1987. Lesson five if you want to be a judge, have a name like Smith, Jones, or Davidson. <laughs> Governor Mark White then appointed first assistant county attorney Ken Harrison to be the fifth judge of this court. Harrison had served well as judge of the 334 before his defeat in 1984 by Marsha Anthony. It was felt by most of the bar that Harrison deserved better, and his appointment back to the bench was seen by most to see a way to make things right. By the way, he may be the last male judge of this court. <laughs> Lesson six, if you want to be a judge, Sometimes you have to lose a race first. Judge Harrison's tenure in the 165th was controversial, and some of his rulings brought harsh media attention and eventually an investigation by the Commission on Judicial Conduct. A young and beautiful lawyer, Elizabeth Ray, took the courageous step of running against a judge who was known to take no prisoners and was known to have many friends. She did it because she thought it was the right thing to do, and only for that reason. It took courage, and it took guts. Two months before the election, Judge Harrison resigned from the bench and withdrew from the ballot uh, the night before a public hearing by the commission. Uh, Judge Ray was elected unanimously. She served this court for 16 years, and then again for another two. She was twice elected to be administrative judge of Harris County. Therefore, lesson seven. If you want to be a judge, sometimes you just have to do the right thing, be courageous, say what the heck, and take your chances. If you've ever seen Risky Business, you know what I just alluded to. <laughs> <laughs> judge Ray's successor was Judge uh, Josefina Munoz Rendon. As it would turn out, Judge Ray would also be her successor. Judge Rendon was the second Puerto Rican judge in Harris County history. Anybody know who the first was? Louis, Louis Moriel Moore. Very good. Um, judge Rendon had the good fortune to run for judge in a year in which virtually all incumbent judges were voted out of office and served this judge for four and served this court for four years. Therefore, lesson eight. If you want to be a judge, timing is important. <laughs> that brings us to the eighth judge of this court, Judge Deborah Ibada Mayfield, who we honor today. She is the seventh alum, but the first alumna of Texas A&M University to become a district court judge in Harris County. You're going to hear lots more about her from the, the following speaker, but I know her to be a hardworking judge. Because
because her car is always at the courthouse before mine gets here, and it's always there when I'm leaving. Uh, and she doesn't come to the bench without having tried cases as a judge, and that speaks volumes for her experience and her qualifications to serve here. Lesson nine. If you want to be a judge, you have to know how to get here. <laughs> Several months after giving the commencement speech, Admiral McRaven was named the Chancellor of the University of Texas uh, system. Under no circumstances will I run for the 165th. <laughs>